Jackson bands because we know the Vitality playstyle. They yep. like to go in. They like to pick fights. Live fast, die young. That is exactly what they want to do. <laughs> and, and that makes this game potentially very explosive. Yeah. Uh, but it could also be very risky. RNG are a team that can punish those mistakes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Team Vitality has this playstyle where they are very committed to playing their own game. Yes. We have seen how good it can look. Jujuge in particular has been excellent. I think his Echo game was a total standout so far at Worlds. But when you do play kind of that high risk, high reward style, when it goes good, it looks incredible. When it goes bad, the game often falls apart very, very quickly, right? And that's, I, I do think though, one of the ways that a team like this can beat a team like RNG. Because I don't think you're gonna beat RNG in a straight up, slow paced macro game. You have to be explosive. You have to catch them off guard. And, you know, playing your own style, playing unique style is one way you could do it. Yeah, and of course, talking about explosive style, uh, yesterday, RNG took down Gen G mm -hmm. with one team fight. Yep. And 60 seconds later, they killed the Nexus. So let's see whether or not RNG are going to be able to find the same opportunity today. In terms of draft, Azale, Sion, Orn, and Alistair taken off the table. Kaisa, Zaya removed, and there's still one ban remaining. But, you know, Urgot's up there, Kali's up there. What ADC are I telling Uzi going to play? We're going to have to see. I think Uzi played Sivir yesterday, if I recall correctly. So. You know, there's going to be some options here, and the final ban will be Talia. Also important to note, it is Casa starting today for RNG. Yeah, and it is very interesting to see all that attention given over to Kaposhar. Really feels like they wanted to get Let Me into this kind of carry versus carry style mashup, or at least Bruiser, whatever you want to call it, Urgot. Uh, and I think I'm a little bit surprised, honestly, that Vitality did leave that Urgot up, but. There has to be so much attention given to Uzi and kind of the picks that enable Uzi, and that's kind of what they've targeted. They've targeted two of his favorite carries, and then they've targeted Karsa's Talia, who really can get down there and, and enable Uzi a lot. Uh, so I do think that having the playmaking with the Thresh in combination with denying some of those picks may force him onto something like a, a little bit more dangerous. I'm very happy to see Kavashar on Aatrox. I definitely mm -hmm. trust in his abilities in that kind of carry v carry, bruiser v bruiser style matchup. But Jack Troll needs to show me a little bit more on his Thresh than he did yesterday. Yeah. Uh, left me a little bit wanting. He got one or two good hooks in the laning phase, but mid-game impact was simply not good enough for the international stage, and today's opponent is even stronger. I'm really going to be interested to see if Attila is willing to bring something out like his Draven. You know, he has shown that throughout the regular season. I think it takes something really special to beat Uzi and Ming in lane. Like, yep. these guys are ridiculous. You heard Aphromoo. Uh, talking about Uzi in the interview and and really that's the kind of response you get from anyone you ask about laning against them They're just so damn good So maybe you do roll the dice a little bit go for something aggressive and and try to win in that way Yeah, and of course for Attila in particular This is one of the guys who's not really spoken about when it comes to European AD carries During the spring split all the hype was around Shelka's ADC upset He was the superstar that didn't make playoffs and Attila was the last sort of Rookie to the stage standing in the role. Summer steps up again, but it, you know, now coming up against Uzi, not only is there the pressure to show up and, and perform for your own region, but you're coming up against the final boss, Uzi. And what is Uzi's year? That's what <laughs> everybody's painting uh, 2018 to be. One of the cool things about it, though, I've got to say, is no one is expecting Attila to beat Uzi. So if you lose, it's expected. Yes. But if you win, if you are able to do well against Uzi, you want to make a name for yourself. How about beating Uzi at Worlds? That is about the biggest statement that a marksman player can make in this day and age. Uzi is just respected so widely. He's so dominant. Yeah. And Varus is a strong laning pick, so that in combination with the Thresh, we might see even more bot lane bans in the second round for Vitality, and, and maybe they really do try to focus on getting a good matchup. So what AD carry do you think Uzi's thinking about, knowing he's got the Rakan by his side? We've already seen the Akali, the Thresh, the, sorry, the Aatrox, the Thresh, and the Varus. So what direction would you like to see him go? I mean, we saw the Sivir come out yesterday. I wouldn't be absolutely shocked to see that coming out. You know, kind of the triumvirate of ADs that are most popular right now have been picked or banned. Uzi, if he wants the style a little bit, he could give us something like the Vayne. He could give us an exciting pick along the lines of that or the Lucian, but Lucian is going to get banned out. So honestly, I'm kind of expecting a, a Sivir or honestly a Tristana. Uh, Tristana is another pick. I've been talking to some players who do think it's going to start coming out if there are more bans towards the marksman role, and uh, this may be a game where he feels comfortable to do it. Well, let's see as uh, phase two bans just about to conclude. Akali, Lucian, LeBlanc, and one last option available. And then, of course, on the side of Vitality, Jazuke 
most likely still looking to lock in his champion as his kickers. Uh, will not have access to that Echo, so maybe Syndra raises in priority. But for Jazuke, you know, something he's played a lot. Uh, Galio is a pick we've seen quite a lot of kickers. Wants to take a carry type jungler, or if he's going to go for a tanky one, then maybe more of a carry in that mid lane. Yeah, we also could see uh, uh, Kindred would be very nice, but we could actually see an Ash come through if he wants to play more for the lane and, and you know, kind of go that sort of style. Callista would be really interesting. Definitely was not expecting to see Callista, but Callista with Rakan does give you some very, very powerful engage. I do think that it should struggle in the 2v2 early on, but if you can find those opportunities, if a hook misses and you can go aggressively forward, there is early kill potential in a more kind of passive lane. Uh, it would certainly be risky, but we'll see if it's going to get locked in. Yeah, a couple seconds longer, and of course, that's going to be a blind pick Irelia. Mm -hmm. um, unless Jazuke really wants to surprise us and take the Aatrox mid, we'll see what option he's going to run into it. But I'm going to go back to that Kindred very briefly. You know, when Vitality subbed in Kickers, he became the point man. The team played around him. He led the way for this dive, engage, go in style, and the entire team follows and supports it in Azale. As you talked about, Tristana will be the final lock here. Yeah, it makes sense. I think that Tristana does make quite a bit of sense. I mean, there's so many options with Marksman that are, that are somewhat interchangeable, so you can go a lot of different directions, but this is something that I've been hearing a lot of people talking about is, as something that they feel like is just below kind of that top three. You know it has incredible uh, late game, incredible sie sieging potential. Uh, is one of the weaker early laners, though. And I think both Rakan and the Tristana are outpaced in that 2v2 by the Varus and Thresh. One thing I would note about the Kindred here is I was a little bit surprised to see that actually locked in against the Gragas, which has already been picked, is that is yep. generally seen as a favorable matchup there for Karsa. We are going to get the late game carry here for Jazuke, but that does make me nervous for the early laning phase. This is something, you know, I had talked about on, on my cast yesterday. Aurelia just gets so many solo kills. It is like the most ridiculous champion in the 1v1 when you hit six. It feels like there's such a high chance of getting that solo kill. And this is Jazuke, though, having the confidence to lock it in, believing in his play. And if he is able to actually get to the later stages, we know that Azir can take over. And secondarily, it works really well with the Kindred Ultimate because you can sweep the enemies out of your own ultimate and, and kind of use that defensively while denying it from your opponents. Oh, so much pressure on the Vitality squad. But Zell, you mentioned already, the expectations here are that RNG will win. Mm -hmm. But Vitality have already defied expectations by performing very well in their first two games. You can argue they should have won yesterday. They should have been 2-0 in the group. Let's see how far down the rabbit hole we can go. How will Vitality perform? And that man on your screen, Jazuke, I was nervous about his performance on the international stage. He had a tumultuous summer split, and now he's going to be playing the Azir. He's going to be repping the SKT skin, no less. <laughs> and again, you know, all eyes on Vitality because they are the ones that have to show us that they can challenge Royal Never Give Up, one of the pre-tournament favorites for the World Championship title. Yeah, they certainly are. They're really starting to kind of feel like the final boss. Everyone looking towards Uzi, everyone talking about Uzi and just how good RNG has been. Listen to that crowd, the fan chants and the support for RNG. It's, it's electric and, and there's a lot of love and a lot of excitement for very good teams and very good players. It's been this long build for RNG towards where they are today, where, you know, time and time again, Uzi has made it far in tournaments, has been incredible, has been respected as one of the best marksman players in the world. But this is the first year where it really feels like, hey, this is their year. Maybe Korea aren't the favorites. And RNG has been building to that with victories at MSI, with back-to-back -back victories at Rift Rivals over Korea, with regional dominance. Yeah. And it really has kind of come to this crescendo here at Worlds, and we're going to see if they can kind of keep that uncrackable armor there. You know, they, they really do look untouchable, and I think that aura can kind of start to fade away if Vitality could take a game. Well, I tell you what, the internet might explode if that happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really agree, and, and I think um, there was a quote in an interview with Uzi very recently where he said that, Ooh. you know, he's been painted as the final boss, and everybody's showing him as expectation-wise, maybe, you know, the, the player and the team that's meant to win. Early advantage as Uzi picks up the award kill already. And, um, you know, Uzi actually said that comes at 
Makes me a little nervous, a little scared. There's more more eyes, more expectation, and right now Uzi and Ming are gonna start trading with Attila and Jack Troll. If play comes down, a little bit of trade, but nothing substantial yet. It's just the race to level two. Yeah, I mean, being the favorite isn't always easy. No. I, I really do think, especially in this day and age with the pressures of social media, it, it can be difficult when the only acceptable option is winning. And that's kind of, uh, you know, the position that RNG is in. So we're gonna have to see how they can kind of deal with that pressure and how they can deal with this explosive step play style that Vitality really is known for. And the man on your screen, Kikis, this is the guy who will sort of make or break uh, this game, in my opinion, with the Kindred, can lead the way, can have that game-changing lands respite, especially when you consider the Azir, the Aatrox, everything on top of it. Um, there's a lot of team fighting potential if they can get grouped up. And for the time being, Vitality pushing in the bottom lane, pushing oh, in the top that lane. Level one ward that got killed is actually triggering this gank from Karsa, and here they go. Oh, uh, there we go. Already a knock up onto Jack Troll. He's got the flash available to him. Gonna hold on to it until the barrel wall comes out. Body slam flash connects. First blood is available, and it will be gifted to Izzy. So smart here from RNG. That is a reactive gank based off of that level one ward denial. They knew Vitality would not have the vision because they killed that in the tri brush. So Karsa actually plans his path to end up bot lane at level three. They get all four summoners and first blood on Uzi without him having to use his flash. Yep, exactly. And you can argue potentially maybe, maybe that's why Karsa was subbed in for this game. Reads the map flawlessly. And the last person you're going to be giving all that advantage to is Uzi. But again, it's just, yep. oh, fantastic. This is the ward that was killed. Yeah, I mean, they know the ward is down. They know that this will not be spotted. So Karsa says, great, hey, why not try this gank? And then a lot of patience here. He knows he is behind Jack Troll. He doesn't have to use his body slam until after he flashes. Just hits him with the barrel slow. Jack Troll flashes out. That guarantees he can land that body slam flash. Clean execution from RNG. Very, very well played. So it gives RNG the advantage. Of course, Uzi got the double uh, long swords as well as the attack speed dagger. Returning back to lane, Tiller's going to start to back away. Now, this is where the pressure is on Vitality. No summoner spells whatsoever. Um, Ming doesn't have his flash either. But on a, a jungle champion like Gragas, it's so, so easy to repeat gank and punish if Attila and Jack Troll are out of position at all. Yeah, it really is. And especially if you don't have any vision in that area. You know, I talked about the 2v2 advantage that these champions should have for Vitality. Your four summoners used now on that play. You don't get to play aggressive anymore yeah. if you don't know exactly where the Gragas is. And of course, we're talking about this mid lane matchup during picks and bans. Um, until level six, Irelia can get a little poked out, a little harassed down by those Sand Soldiers and Autos. You can see it's a 13 CS advantage to Jazuka with a pretty sizable wave in front of him as well. But it's the moment that that Vanguard's edge is unlocked, the moment level six is hit, that you then go, now you're gonna be a little more careful. And actually, you can already see Xiaohu jumping forward and trading with Jazuke. Um, and I wanna see how he's gonna play this matchup. Jazuke, a little bit of pressure as his Cabo being chunked down by Let Me. Yeah, but both the solo laners are playing quite well so far for Vitality. You mentioned the CS advantage there. In the mid lane, top lane is going quite well for Cabo Shard. And, you know, a matchup that is somewhat debated which side has the favor, but uh, most people would agree that it's it's tough for Aatrox to play aggressively into this, and you know Cabo Shard has done well for himself. Yes, exactly. And we need to see whether or not he can unlock this matchup because remember, uh, Vitality opted into leaving the Ergon and the Aatrox open. Also, some pretty common bands as we've seen throughout the tournament. So this will show his face top. The Infernal Chains will come down to stand by some time. Where is Wolf? Gonna chunk out. Let me, but no summon the spell you. Still, nice little play there from Kickus, and he didn't have to actually spend much time at all to make it happen. He does push back Let Me, and then he's looking towards the Gromp, but TP is coming back in here from Let Me, and I do think this is a very risky invade. Cabal Shard's going back to base, Jazuka is going back to base, and you're invading. Well, this is a Kickus special, I am afraid. Um, he does tend to go into the enemy jungle. Now, looking at vision and wards, RNG don't have a lot there. What we need in the bottom lane is Ming jumps in, gets chunked up. Jack Troll gets good damage down, but the Ignite was not oh. thrown out, and Ming survives by the skin of his teeth. While that's happening, there's a skirmish being set up around the mid lane river as Karsa and Kikis look like they were dueling over the Scuttle Crab. Instead, the focus is going to be Xiaohu. The Emperor's Divide sends 
Xiaohu backwards. He survives a few seconds longer. Now Kikis is running for his life. Carter's trying to chase him down. A flash over the wall. Vitality get their first kill, and they've got a numbers advantage. Carter's inside Vitality's jungle, and he need let he needs let me to help him get out. Yeah, and he will be able to get out here. Kikis does not want to commit to that at very low health with the Urgot available. Carson may just stay around here. Kikis doesn't have smite, so Carson doesn't either. We'll see if this happens. All right, taking a look. Level six. Oh, the Aldi. Be so close. They're beyond deep. Doesn't find its target. It will be enough to steal away the Bramble back in RNG. Stamp jungle authority. Yeah, some risky play from Kikis, but it does pay off. I mean, he steals away the Gromp. They get the 2v2 kill on Aurelia before Xiaohu hits six. And I also think, uh, expect more of that from Kikis. Uh, it is a double-edged sword. Hey, getting so it far it's cutting RNG. Here we go. And so it's keeping the gold even. But for how much longer? Level six hit by Kasa. And every time I see this uh, top lane duo, there's always a potential for a dive, and this is how it all played out. And I just really like this play here from Jizuke. Has so much confidence. That's not a level six Aurelia. And Xiaohu is too far away from his jungler to be kind of clearing that pink ward here. And then this is just nice play from Kikis. You know Karsa doesn't have his flash from the bot lane gank, so flash over when the, the backup comes from the top side, he just hops back over the wall once more. Wow, well, that's uh, how Vitality got their first kill. It's how Jizuke maintains his 10 CS advantage. And uh, for the time being, Uzi's plus 13, mm -hmm. pretty much even as far as the top laners are concerned. We're against that 10 minute mark and Vitality once again, just playing a little bit forward. Look around the mid lane, just how much vision RNG have to play with. And Kikis, he was already going into that invade. He, he really, really likes to play forward. He really likes to play in the enemy's face and uh, potentially setting up a dive here as well. Yeah, and we'll see if they can pull this off. It would be a bit of a risky one, but you can see Jizuke was moving up as well. And even just this pressure is very nice because now he can go back to farming and let me has to just sacrifice all that farm because Karsa is not in the area to defend him. Very, very nice. Cabo Shard being assisted by the rest of the team. I mean, that play alone, that's almost a 20 CS advantage now that has been created because Cabo Shard had laned well and because they're able to deny some of this. And it will be the gap closed a little bit as let me pick up some of that farm, but Vitality is playing really, really well, honestly, in the early stages of this game. Well, we need to see if they can convert it into some sort of lead in the mid game. Um, you know, they're showing they can play even kick as picks up a mark from that top scuttle crab. And Cabo Shard actually came down to help out while Vitality are playing with their vision in the mid lane. Emperor's oh, Divide the shuffle. will catch on the Shaohu. He's got Flash available to him. Kikis is the target. Will need to throw down the lands for Spite. And all of a sudden, it's Vitality in trouble. That's a great barrel. Kikis will get taken out. Exhaust slows down Shaohu for now. But Jazuke does not have enough damage. And RNG outplayed 2v2. Yeah, Karsa was expecting that one. Sitting behind Shaohu as he goes in. And this time, Vitality don't have it in the 2v2. Kikis honestly did a good job sitting himself against the wall so he couldn't get knocked out of his ultimate, but there just wasn't any finishing power from them. Azir doesn't yet have an item and needs some time really to get going. A fiendish codex, and I think he only had one attack for Dagger, so yeah. it's, it's, it's just not enough. Um, well played again. Kasa, uh, right place, right time, reading the situation is what allowed him to pick up first blood, yep. and he was yet to respond for 2v2. Exactly, and had had he not been there, this play is actually perfect for Vitality. This is an easy kill, I think, in that 2v1, but because he is, they burst down Kikis so fast, he has to ult very early, and then despite the well-timed exhaust for Jizuke, there's more than enough left in the tank for RNG to grab that kill. Yeah, of course, uh, the disarm there also being so, so effective against Kindred. Really, really difficult to use those Dance of Arrows when you want to be hopping and kiting around. Yeah. Um, so it's a good matchup. Nevertheless, the kill was secured by Kase. It's two kills to one. It is still an even gold game at uh, 11 minutes. And the first big ticket item that's completed is the Storm Razor by Uzi in the bottom lane. And Attila's working his way towards that Blade Rune King. Yeah, and I mean, the, the nice thing for Vitality here is that while you could certainly say, well, Uzi's scaling up all this time, Azir is as well, right? Yes. And Azir is going to be very, very strong in the team fight phase. The thing he has to be worried about is these two guys sitting in the brush because their engage is incredible. And Kikis might just face check this, and oh god, not yes, where you want to be. He will. Kikis will go down yet, yeah, instantly blown up. There's a great stun onto Jazuke. Manages to shift those sands over the wall, but. Uh, Again, just good positioning, good decision-making yep. from RNG. Yeah, they're just anticipating the moves here of Kikis, and 
really playing it smart. The bot lane turret likely just going to go down solo here to Uzi. More gold in his pockets, and they're looking for Jack Troll now. All right, Jack Troll's got flash available. That's going to be a good play to slow down Kasa, but Tower First Blood will be secured in the bottom lane. It extends the gold lead ever so slightly. And what I really like about RNG's play and, and how they are you know, playing out this landing phase, it feels like they really understand or really uh, interpret what Vitality is going to do. They're well yeah. researched, well prepared, and then responding to in-game decision making, like that level one ward, for example. Yeah, I mean, they've just been really, really playing a, a solid game here. Vitality, you know, has kept it fairly close for quite a long time. You know, despite the fact that RNG, it's, it's not really a poor RNG game by any means. Uh, Vitality just kind of has been mashing them. And this is still a game that Vitality certainly can win. They do have scaling, but again, it's about the engage from RNG. Ming and Karsa have such incredible and explosive engage that if Jazuke or Attila ever get caught and knocked in, you may not be able to save them unless Kikis is there with a key ultimate. So while we've got teams posturing for a potential fight, Uzi will get spotted out. RNG looking for an engage, and Karsa's coming up from the river. Now, important to note, Attila is not yeah, so yeah. if a Rift Herald fight were to break out, this will be a 4v5, and I don't know if this is the smartest decision for Vitality, they do back away. Yeah, I just think Vitality has no chance of fighting right now. You don't even have your Blade of the Rune King done, and Uzi already has his Storm Razor plus a Zeal on top of it, so you know, Uzi is so much more powerful at this point in the game with additional itemization. What do you want to see from Vitality? You know, it's, it's a thousand gold. It's not insurmountable. There is scaling. There are tools on the side of Vitality. So how do you want them to play to get back in lead and, and look towards a win? I think you need to actually kind of protect Jizuke very well, try to get Vision around this Azir so he can stay safe and farm in that mid lane. And then at the same time, you're going to have to have Kikis basically following around the map wherever Uzi goes, I think. Otherwise, Uzi is going to be knocking down turrets too quickly, and you're going to fall too much behind. But instead, they're going to try to make a counter play on bot. Yeah, Kikis is going bot, obviously, because Kasa showed top. Lamb's Respite is available if necessary. They're going to look to take down Lemmy before throwing it down. And Cabo Shot will just concede oh. passive instead of using the ultimate. So maybe that will pay dividends later. But now the tower's the focus. Yeah, that was that ultimate almost expired there. He might have actually died. It was really close, but really nicely done. And they will trade a tower, so this is good for them. And then it's just about, can they defend this turret? Because if you lose your mid turret this early, it becomes very dangerous for Azir, and Ming is ready to flank this. Nobody from Vitality has responded yet. Jazuke is holding onto yeah, the flash. He, he anticipated it, it. Look at the exit route from Jazuke. So it's two towers to one, but Vitality get that extra kill. And the problem is, now Jazuke's lost his mid tower. That safe yeah. farming lane is not so safe anymore. Yeah, it really does become dangerous. This is a nice counter punch, though, from Vitality. You know, this is your other option. You can try to play away from the strong member of RNG, and it looks like that was the decision here. Straight in onto Let Me. Let Me avoid a lot of that damage, but Cabo Shard and Kickus focus him down. And yeah, this ultimate is eh, about to expire. That was actually really close. Close. Yeah. I trust in Cabo trust Shard. Timing, yeah. I trust in Cabo Shard. Had it been Kickers, I would have been a little more nervous. <laughs> a little more nervous. Um, but it's like when you've got two save my life buttons yeah. or, or options, uh, you need to make sure your communication is crystal Definitely clear. Do. Unfortunately, but for Vitality, it was at the 15 minute mark. RNG extended their lead to 2,000 gold, three towers to one, and they're just outplaying Vitality. They're in the right place at the right time, and they're making the right moves. So the pressure is now on Vitality to find those counter punches that you talked about and, you know, get Jazuke and Attila to carry positions. They've got Nashes, they've got Blade, so the tools are at least unlocked for the next one. They certainly are, but Uzi's on two items, right? And this is what RNG does, I think, better than any other team in the world, is funnel gold into Uzi. This guy is such a team fight beast. They give him solo gold on towers. Anytime a kill is available, they can donate. You sure as hell gonna see Uzi getting it. Yep. And that is what gets him to these positions where he's 1,700 gold ahead. It's not even like insane. Attila has farmed poorly, right? So that is really, really the tough part for them to deal with. And I think, you know, keeping Uzi down is such a difficult proposition for any team. And anybody in the world, Yeah. Uh, in fact. I mean, if you call it the pregame interview or the interview just before this game with Afro Move, he actually didn't have words for how good Uzi is. He, yeah. he was like looking into a monster's face and <laughs> terrified for his life. Nevertheless, it's uh, up to Vitality and Attila to try and combat this Stormraiser's rapid fire cannon Tristana. 
And uh, I need to see whether or not Jack Troll or Kickass or, or Jazuke can find a way to, to split these fights up. And this is good, an advantage on the tower, but it may be traded for one or even two towers. Yeah, Karsa's setting up for a potential dive here. If Kickass is not there to defend Jazuke and he steps forward, he's going to die. But Jazuke is playing really smart. Jazuke has not died. He has not given up any kills to Xiaohu. And, you know, he has a significant farm advantage himself. So we'll see if they can defend the turret. It's going to be close. Well, the tower does survive for now. And... Again, just very, very, as you mentioned, very good, very smart uh, positioning from Jazuke. He's going to throw down that passive, the Sun Disc, onto the mid outer turrets, and this Play will himself. help. But, but RNG are playing respectful. Yeah. They're not over chasing and they're not over fighting because they believe in their late game. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you had said to me, Zale, that at 17 minutes, Vitality would be even on gold with RNG, would I want that to happen? Yes, every time. Every I mean, single I, time. I think Vitality have, have got to be very pleased with how they played them for this game. And, you know, Jazuke, this is three straight games that I would say he really has been impressing. Yeah. Uh, he has been a standout on Vitality for me. And, you know, he's going to have his opportunities to carry this game. If he can play flawlessly, there's always the chance. We saw an incredible game earlier from Scout on the Azir just absolutely decimating Team Liquid. And if you can make those plays, if you can find those Azir shuffles, you can just decide a game by yourself. Oh, Zael, you're saying things that I want to hear. <laughs> you're building hope, but that death sentence will quash ever so slightly as Jack Troll on the Thresh hasn't had much of an impact. The laning phase didn't go his way. Oh, Look at the nice engagement. flash. Very nice play. Jazuke gets out of range. The play comes down. Now he's running for his life, chunk down low. He got the Uzi! Catches onto Uzi! Jazuke takes him down! Vitality kill Uzi! You, <laughs> you've heard of the caster curse. That was the caster blessing from Quickshot. You just asked for something out of Jack Troll, and he finds the flash hook on Uzi, who didn't even believe it was going to hit him. Max range. They take down the carry. What can they do after? This just keeps the goal even. This keeps the kills even. And Jack Troll, the man who secured the death sentence, will donate a reply kill. The vitality move, if ever I have seen. <laughs> you gotta keep expectations reasonable, you know? <laughs> you win some, you lose That's some. And it. this one was a beautiful flash on the engage. And actually, the shuffle level for Suzuki yes. was even better. And then Jack Troll flashing, hooks around Xiaohu, catching Uzi, and they're able to just. Decimate him, taking him down, but Attila's in trouble. He is indeed. Fear beyond death, not even needed. Oh. Just let me instant him, instantly kills him. Karsa secures a solo dragon. And RNG, they just keep showing they are one or two steps ahead, and this is still their game. Yeah, that war machine just keeps on chugging RNG. Just so, so strong throughout this tournament with Vitality. You know, this is. Jazuke now on double spell pen. He has his Nashers. He's at quite a strong point in the game. If you look over on the side of RNG, there's really no magic resist being built up besides just this one Aegis. So, yeah. you know, he is at a really strong point and his burst is going to be powerful. So let's turn our attention to the next phase of the game. We've crested 20 minutes. Baron comes up and the two ways you can play this next phase, or the two main ways, playing around Baron to win or playing around Split Push to win. You know, how do you expect this to play out? Because RNG have actually kind of ignored the Baron. They haven't needed it to win the games. Yeah, I think I think in this game, this is it, it, it's more of a Baron style game. Okay. Yes, you can split push, but I think Aatrox can match and cut a wave clear against Xiaohu. But the turn from RNG off of Baron is so incredible with the Gragas and with the Rakan that you get vision around there. You're not looking to burn the Baron unless Vitality doesn't show up. And if they show up, you instantly turn and you try to get a kill. Well, let's see how they set it up, because RNG, they push deep into this northern quadrant. They've got deep vision as well. Uh, the fact that they've got the, all the outer towers down allows them to, you know, make that move earlier if they so desire. And I think what we're going to see here from RNG is the third item will come through from Uzi, and then they will look for fights. When that IE is completed, he's going to be so hilariously ahead of Attila that it's it's like it has to be a miracle fight from Jizuke, right? You know, he is just so strong at that point because he is over 2,000 gold ahead. Oh, there's so much tension building. You mentioned the lead that Uzi has. Kasa and Ming, they've snuck their way into this red bush. Yeah. Red Attila. buff bush. Phil's gotta be so careful. Like, anytime the Thresh is not right there with you, 
we saw let me solo kill him. Shao can do it just as easy or easier. Yeah. Karsa plus anyone else can do that as well. So he's got to be so careful. And he is flashless because of that mid lane fight. So that's always something where you kind of have to track the follow up. That initial flash was great for Ming, but those ultimates come back faster than the summon. Yeah, they really, really do. And Jack Troll playing on the edge of safety, just trying to push that vision out. As Vitality shoved this mid wave down, the last turret on the outer ring remaining is mid four. Royal never give up. And uh, Vitality will get a little bit of time. Not too many auto attacks onto it. One of the things that's also going to be kind of tough here for Vitality is I guess still is sitting on one mark. And you really do want to hit four before you're going into these mid-game team fights. That extra range makes it so much easier to maneuver. When you're going up against a long-range marksman like that of Uzi, and then all this engage where you kind of have to play that very line uh, where you're almost in range of engage but not quite, it's so hard. You're like a 500 range marksman. It's really, really tough. Yes, it, it is. The Vitality, they need to try to find some opportunities. Jackal, no flash, remember? Dragon Cloud goes up, and look at the damage. Attila was untouched. I didn't even see the melting caster. Jackal gets a death sentence on to let me. All of Vitality collapse. So far, it's one for one. Jazuke's the target. Emperor's divide will not save coming. his life. But look at Uzi. He's not even joined the fight yet. Manages to get one. Rocket jumps over the wall and kickers. Dashes to his death. RNG decimate vitality and they've got control of the jungle and that's going to be the baron very likely we'll see there's pings that were onto it i don't know if they're going to go for it or not no they are they're not going to try the three man it don't want to make the risky play here they are still very much in control so rng able to come out top on that fight and honestly some little things kind of went wrong for vitality that really could have changed the fight drastically you know, the Urga ultimate not being blocked, and now they are going to go back onto the ultimate, so they can eat my words. Costa's going to get there just in time, waiting for him to close the gap. Uh, Kabashod may try to contest this. Let's see if he commits. Flash is available. No ultimate, no blast cone. Uh, it's going to be a bold move if he decides to go over the wall. Let's see if he decides. I'm holding my breath as Baron will go down, jumps into the pit, and RNG will secure it. Jack needs to get the lantern in, gets Kabashod out. Death Sentence will find a target. Kavashard escapes this life. Yeah, I like the try from Kavashard. Even if that's like a 5% chance, it's probably still worth the play. Uh, the initial fight here in this Predator, Acer Predator replay uh, is going very well for Vitality. And you start to think, hey, they can actually win this fight. The ultimate is very well timed. As Let Me Come Through, someone needs to actually block for Jack Troll, but no one is standing in between the Urgot and that Thresh. So not only does that get him the kill, he flashes in and is able to land the Fear, and that is really changing the fight. So when Uzi arrives, there's not much chance. And you can see the Emperor's Divide used early on yeah. makes Jazuke like a fish in a barrel, and yep. he just gets dove and blown up. So RNG take a significant lead in the game. Mm. They've been in control the entire time, but it's been a game of inches. Yeah. Now with Baron, two dragons, kill advantage, 5,000 gold lead, 4,000 gold lead rather, and Infinity Edge completed for Uzi. Uh, now it feels like this is Orange's time to shine. Yeah, I think this may have been the, the straw that broke the camel's back. It's gonna take some magic out of Vitality now because being that full IE ahead of your opponent, really having so much experience as well. He's up two levels, up a full item. He's gonna have a ton of range on this Tristana and will be looking for something. Vitality has to make plays. They know this, so they're gonna try to get Let Me. All right, take a look. Let Me still got 2,000 HP to burn through. A flash used by Kickers. Let Me may win the 1v2. Lamb's Rest Bite comes down and oh, oh, down oh. the pit. Let Me destroys Kickers. That was beautiful that was incredible and he's gonna just scuttle away here so well done by let me kick this was on top of thought he was safe and now jazuke trying to get some revenge he is indeed emperor's divide comes down he threw down the flash as well but it's at the expense of the base inhibitor number one falls inhibitor number two is the target and rng have a numbers advantage how long will they stick around just to secure the inhib and then they'll back away this is an RNG that is serious about not dropping a game. You are not seeing them make any needless risks. They are always going for the high percentage play. And they are looking so damn good here. Let me, styling on them in the 1v2. I am grinning ear to ear because of how <laughs> beautiful that was. Not only did he win the 1v2, but such a stylish finish yeah. on one of the best looking spells in the entire game. <laughs> Oh, nicely done. Let me, they've broken, with the help of RNG, broken open the bases. It's 8k gold, 
Look, it's the result we were expecting. And RNG paid Vitality the respect. They played clean. They didn't overreach. But now they have all the tools they need to just finish this one out. And I think it is the result that we expected, but we're getting there in a different way. Vitality yeah. turned in you know, a very competitive uh, early and kind of early mid game in this game. And really, they had their options. You know, They had their chances. Uzi, though, it always feels inevitable that he's going to get his farm. He's going to get his items. And if you don't make something special happen, I mean, he's at the point where he's 80 CS ahead now. Yeah. He has so much gold in the bank, and you have to kill this guy at the start of the team fight, or you have no chance. Uh, it's around 4,500 gold <laughs> above Attila right now. That's Uzi, 3, 1, and 0. The last remaining inhibitor turret is now the focus of Royal Never Give Up. Xiaohu is coasting into the mid lane. Kickus is already dead. No ultimate, no flash available. Emperor's divide by some time for Attila to take down Ming, but it's simply not enough. Have a shot, passive has been popped, and Let Me is being autoed by Attila, but there's not enough frontline, there's not enough time, and Vitality will lose their last inhibitor turret. Yeah, that's three inhibs, and this is probably gonna be the death push here for RNG, looking to close it out and move the 3-0 in the groups. Wow, four versus no. three, not gonna do it just yet. Okay. Azale, you mentioned it. This is the last game of the first round, Robin, for both RNG and Vitality. This Group B will conclude tomorrow, the day after. We'll have a whole day of Group B games. And RNG looking to go 3-0. It is a matter of uh, clean play now. Yeah, I mean, this is just so much more discipline than you're used to seeing in the past from RNG. Yes. And this has really been part of their maturation as a team. Have become so disciplined, have become so clean at closing out these games, taking no risks, base, complete another item, buy your potions, get as strong as you possibly can, wait for the minions to come come in. And I mean, you basically take it from, okay, you had a 98% chance to win, to now you have 100. Correct, correct. And of course, it doesn't help having like a 4,000 gold lead <laughs> yeah. if 3,000 of it is in coins. Yep. So, Kikis will once again be the target, get stunned up by the flawless duet, but he does manage oh. to get the ultimate off and he gets destroyed. Fear beyond death as Kikis is face palming. He feels the wrath of Royal Never Give Up, and Ming jumps in with the quickness, gets a taunt and a knock-up onto Cabo Shot, he once again uses that blood well to buy some time, as Nexus turret number one is being focused. Yes, Uzi gets caught, but Uzi does not get killed. He hops and skips and jumps and kills Vitality right where they stand. The Nexus is down. Royal Never Give Up will ace Vitality and go undefeated in group stage one. <laughs> and Uzi is loving it. Vitality just wanted to take him down, committing everything in that final fight. But he stays alive. He starts the resets. And RNG are going to do it. Very, very well played by Royal Never Give Up. And give some credit to Vitality. They did put up a fight, but you could see the small mistakes, the small differences. The level one ward yep. gives first blood to Uzi, and you just kind of go, yep. That's pretty much how this game's gonna go. <laughs> Small little differences that give RNG eventually a snowball win. But the credit to Vitality, despite the fact that it was, you know, that really intelligent play from Barca, the first blood onto Uzi, they stayed competitive for a very long time. Kikis was proactive, got early kills. Jazuke laid very well against Xiaohu, staying up and farm the whole game. Yep. There are some positives to take away, but RNG certainly in control the whole game. This is what people want to see for a world championship caliber team. Azale, RNG are 3-0 that defeated all the other opponents in their group. They have an average game time of 30 minutes, 100% uh, first tower ratio, <laughs> nearly 90% Drake control. It is absolute dominance. 